I will be keeping time for me, so hopefully we'll, and again, two minutes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> candidates. And the first question, for, all right, Dorothy Leonard. Uh, La Crosse has an unusually high percentage of tax-exempt properties. How can tax-exempt properties pay more of the share of the cost of city government? Two minutes. Yeah, thanks for the question, Mitch. Um, again, we all got into um, high taxes. I think we're all aware of that and um, trying to look for ways to, to curb that problem. We had a retreat earlier in the year and I spent some time with the city assessor and we did talk about some of the ways that we could go after this um, to make it more fair. Um, one of the things is to look at regional taxation or countywide. The other thing is to look at um, some of the nonprofits paying a little bit higher um, user fees and things like that that are more um, a portion uh, of what they represent in cost to the city. And what that does, you know, is take it and put it across the board as um, fair. The uh, bigger entities that are nonprofits that have a lot of money coming in, um, you know, they can afford to put a certain percentage into the cost of different services. The people who are in the little tiny house that are paying really high taxes because those entities aren't taxed, you know, it's not a fair and equitable tax. So we did spend quite a bit of time and I'm hoping that through the retreat process that we had where we were going to set goals for the city, that we will be able to take on some of those issues because those are things that we have not ever really, in my four years on the council, ever had a chance to talk about. Dorothy Leonard. Jim Blador, the same question to you. With Ross's unusually high percentage of tax exempt properties, how can tax exempt properties pay more of the share of the cost of city government? That's an in interesting question, Mitch. Thank you very much. Uh, one of the issues that we have to realize with tax exempt properties is not all is what it seems. For example, churches, which are tax exempt, probably use a lot fewer city resources than some other facilities. So just maybe that's not such a bad thing in total that they aren't taxed. In addition, if they have to pay a higher percentage of their uh, income, which is usually from things like contributions, that's still coming out of our pockets as taxpayers. It's coming out of the left pocket instead of the right pocket. So the idea of changing the source is still going to bring it right out of our uh, pockets. The only logical solution and I'm not saying that there aren't other considerations that can be made, but the only logical solution is to cut city costs, to streamline city operations, and we can do this without saying, gee, no leaf pickup this week. Uh, we can do this without saying, well, the police department isn't gonna be able to put as many cops on the street. We don't have to say things like that. Instead, we have to make operations more efficient. And no matter how you slice it, we just spend too much money on things that we don't need. We probably could do away with uh, traffic circles and put in stop signs. Some things like that would make for worthwhile government. Thank you, Jim Blitton. Next question. 